Hi everybody, welcome to video number five where we're going to look at the origin of Earth's interior. Now Earth's interior is made mostly of igneous rocks and those igneous rocks ultimately provide all of the raw materials that we use to make things in our everyday lives. So understanding how these materials evolved, where they came from, is really important. Understanding Earth's interior is also going to help us understand what drives plate tectonics and how that works. So this video will be divided into three parts. First, we'll look at core mantle differentiation. Then we'll look at Earth's internal layers. And then we'll finish by talking about what mantle convection is and how it relates to plate tectonics, specifically the process of seafloor spreading. OK, so our story starts about 4.6 billion years ago. At that time, the universe was basically a bunch of dust swirling around our sun. And those dust grains started to clump together into what are called planetesimals. And those planetesimals then collided and collected into larger planets, things like Earth. Now, at that time, the composition of Earth was totally homogeneous. It was just this homogeneous dust that was all stuck together. However, that dust contained radioactive elements. And those, the decay of those elements caused Earth to heat up and other planets also. And for the larger planets like Earth, they were not able to conduct the heat away fast enough. So they heated up and basically experienced a nuclear meltdown. And during that meltdown, iron was the material with the lowest melting temperature. So it started to melt first. And what happened is, quote unquote, drops of iron were drawn towards the core by gravity. So this liquid iron migrates towards the core and it leaves behind uh, molten silica and oxygen in what would become Earth's mantle. So today, this differentiation event means that Earth today is not homogeneous. The different layers have different compositions. And specifically, the core of Earth is mostly iron nickel. And out, outside of that is Earth's mantle which is mostly made of silica and oxygen. And then we have Earth's crust. All right, so let's now look more closely at these layers now that we know how they were formed. So here's a little pie slice of Earth's interior. And you can see that the inner roughly 3,000 kilometers of Earth are the core. And as we just said, that's made of pure iron and nickel. Um, and it is n does, has no silica. It does not have silicate rock. It's just metal. Above that, or outside of that, is the mantle. Now, the mantle is made mostly of silica and oxygen. And it's mostly silicate rock. Now, in particular, it's what we would call a mafic silicate rock. And you may know that that's. The word mafic refers to rock that's enriched in iron, magnesium, and calcium. One of the remarkable things about the mantle is that it is so hot that it actually flows very slowly like molasses over time. And that's going to be the process of convection, which we'll see in a minute. Now, sitting on top of the mantle, the mantle is about 3,000 kilometers thick in its own right. Sitting up on top of the mantle is the crust, OK? This is very thin. It's 7 to 70 kilometers thick. So it's just this little skin sitting on the outside of Earth, perhaps like the crust on a creme brulee. And it's very different. Uh, it's chemically different. Um, it's also made mostly of silicon and oxygen. So it's a silicate rock or made of silicate rocks, but they tend to be felsic in composition. They tend to be enriched in potassium and sodium and silica. It's also very cold and very rigid. 
So instead of flowing, Earth's crust always behaves in a rigid or brittle way. And we'll see that in future lectures. So let's try to visualize this in some kind of real way. Um, what does Earth's mantle actually look like? Well, it's made of peridotite rock, okay? That's this green rock shown here. Um, and it's a rock, it's fairly simple. It's a mafic igneous rock. The minerals are olivine, pyroxene, and plagioclase. Now this picture, how do we know this, right? This is from, the mantle is never at the surface. So how do we know what this rock is? In this case, these are uh, chunks of the, the mantle, peridotite, that were erupted from volcanoes. So the volcanoes brought this rock from deep below and erupted it in lavas on the surface where geologists were able to collect it and get a glimpse of what the mantle looks like. Now, what about the core? What does that look like? Well, we have no idea what our own core looks like. We don't have a sample of it. But we do have uh, our meteorites. Now, meteorites are chunks of rock that fall from outer space onto Earth. Some of them are called iron-nickel meteorites, um, like this special one here, which has a pure iron-nickel matrix with huge olivine crystals embedded in it. And scientists think that this is actually a piece of the core mantle boundary from another planet that was destroyed by an impact and a fragment fell to Earth. In this case, it was a fragment of that planet's core mantle boundary. So this is, gives us confidence that our own core is probably also made of iron and nickel. OK, so now we know about Earth's internal layers. Let's learn a little bit more about how the mantle behaves and how it relates to the crust. So one of the, the key things about the mantle is that the rock peridotite flows slowly in what's called a convection cell. And so the way this works is that the hotter rock rises and the cooler rock sinks. And effectively what's going on is that Earth is trying to sweat. It's trying to get rid of its heat. And it does that by having hot rock rise up towards the surface and cold rock sink back down. So let's look at this animation, which is going to show uh, some of that rising and sinking. Okay, here it goes. So notice the hot rock rising, the hot peridotite. And then it moves off this way, and then it sinks down back into the mantle. Maybe it heats back up again, and then rises. Okay, So this circular motion is called a convection cell right here. Now what's so critical about this is that the convection cell is intimately related to, to the motion of tectonic plates at the surface. Specifically, you can see that upwelling of the convection cell right here often corresponds to mid-ocean spreading ridges. As that mantle peridotite comes up, it melts. Uh, and that magma actually creates new oceanic crust um, and allows these two plates to spread apart in opposite directions. Likewise, if you look over here, you'll see this subduction zone bringing cold oceanic crust down into the mantle. And this is associated with a downwelling limb of the convection cell. So the main point here is that the mantle rock peridotite is flowing in these circular convection cells. And oftentimes, the upwelling is associated with a spreading ridge. And oftentimes, the downwelling is associated with a subduction zone. So let's finish this up by looking at a map of the seafloor. This isn't just a theoretical process. This map shows the age of the seafloor between North America and Africa. And running down the middle is this mid-ocean spreading ridge, where even today, magma is actively coming to the surface. So the age of the ocean crust at the spreading ridge is 0, because it was just created yesterday. And as you move farther away from the spreading ridge, 
the ages get older into this blue, which actually is an age of 180 million years ago. So at 180 million years ago, North America was touching Africa and the ocean basin was just starting to open. Um, and over the intervening 180 million years, new crust has been created on both sides of the spreading ridge um, and it's allowed the two tectonic plates to move apart from one another. And of course, this spreading ridge is associated with upwelling piece of a convection cell. One cool uh, real world example, if you've ever been to Iceland, it's an island that's located right on the mid-ocean ridge. And the entire island of Iceland is formed by the eruption of fresh basalt that was just recently melted from the mantle. Uh, here's an example of what that looks like. These big thick basalt flows that were created by melting of mantle and uh, eruption. Uh, in this case, the eruptions happen to be above sea level instead of below. Okay, so to wrap up this video, um, here's three summary questions that I think you should know the answer to. Um, and they really hit on the things that we've talked about in this video. So for example, what event caused Earth to differentiate into a core and mantle? That was the meltdown event we talked about in part one. What are key differences between Earth's crust and mantle in terms of composition and mechanical behavior? That was what we talked about in part two of the video. And how do convection cells drive seafloor spreading? We talked about that in part three. Thanks for listening and see you in class.